Hi, and welcome back to our daily devotional as we continue through the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, today, our section is from Matthew 6, verses 9 through 15, which means we're looking at the Lord's Prayer. So remember, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is addressing his disciples. Okay, so leading up to verse 9, Jesus is telling them to not pray like the hypocrites and Gentiles. And then as we get to verse 9, Jesus says, Then pray like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. How, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. It's a sobering statement. Now, I'm not going to spend this time breaking down the prayer, mainly because five minutes is just, it's not enough time. So instead, I'm going to ask you one question. Do you delight in praying? So the question isn't, do you pray? How often do you pray? Do you pray for hours? The question is, do you delight in praying? And I, I want to, first I want to say that I recognize there are seasons we all go through in prayer, right? There are seasons where we can feel dry in our prayer life, and then there are seasons where our prayer life seems to dramatically increase. But again, I go back to the question, do you delight in prayer? I think there is a common struggle with believers where guilt plays a big part in our prayer life. And there are so many reasons why we can feel that way, right? We don't want to pray and we feel guilty. We don't know how to pray and we feel guilty. Uh, we struggle with quieting our mind. Just to get to a place where we can begin to pray, we become distracted and then we feel guilty. Or maybe even we see the vibrant prayer lives of others and instead of allowing that to challenge and encourage us to grow in our prayer life, we just compare ourselves to them and end up feeling guilty. It's almost like we're approaching the throne of guilt rather than approaching the throne of grace. So instead of looking forward to our time with our Father, we become hesitant to even approach Him in prayer because of that looming guilt. And when that becomes our mindset, we shouldn't be surprised that eventually guilt replaces delight. So I want to encourage you that if, if this is something you struggle with, you need to first extend yourself grace. Because Jesus gives you grace. Listen to Hebrews 4. For we do, not have, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. If this is something we struggle with, then we need to change how we think. Now, Milton Vincent is an author, and he puts it like this. There is simply no other way to compete with the forebodings of my conscience, the condemnings of my heart, and the lies of the world and the devil than to overwhelm such things with daily rehearsings of the gospel. We need to remind ourselves of who we are in Christ and how the Father sees us because, because of that. When Jesus begins this prayer with our Father in heaven, we have to remember how radical it was for the disciples to hear this. Jesus was the first Jewish rabbi to call God Father, and it was an extreme departure from tradition. So much so that many of Jesus' enemies wanted to destroy him for claiming this kind of intimate relationship with the sovereign God of heaven and creator of all things. And not only that, but now Jesus is saying to his people, when you pray, you say our Father. Jesus has given us the right and privilege to come into the presence of the majesty of God and call him Father because he is our Father. And we can only say that because God has adopted us into his family and made us co-heirs with his only begotten son. Prayer is fellowship with your father. As a believer, God wants to spend time with you, not because he needs it, but because he knows you need it. And you need to see that privilege correctly through the lens of grace, not guilt. I want you to hear me. If you belong to him, God loves you. He already knows all of your frailties. He knows all of your weaknesses. All of the things that, uh, about you that you don't want to admit to him, he knows all of them. You will never shock God, and he will never shame you. He knows your need is greater than you realize, and his provision for you in Jesus is infinitely more than you can comprehend. Prayer isn't about getting results. It's about getting to know our Father and conforming our hearts and minds to his. So I want to leave you with this. Zephaniah 3.17 says, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. 
He will exult over you with loud singing. In other words, when God's people seek him, follow him, rejoice in him, and trust him, God delights in them. And this delight isn't, this delight isn't God being content with us in an emotionless way. But when he says he exults over you with loud singing, I understand that to be a joyful, divine celebration. So the next time you go into prayer, remember that you're not approaching the throne of guilt, but you're approaching the throne of grace. You're approaching the throne of the Father who is pleased to give you the kingdom. The throne of the Alpha and Omega who has commanded you to spend time with him because he loves you and knows how much you need him. And if you... If you have this idea that you need to spend you know, hours with the Lord, begin with just a few minutes. Don't feel the need to throw this time limit on. Just start small. But when you go in, go in with a heart where you are wanting to delight in your time with Him and ask the Lord to help you with that. So I love you guys. Hope that encourages you. And uh, have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.